Hello and welcome. He comes from one of the poorest countries in the world, but brings with him one of the richest sounds of Africa. The intricate and haunting tones of the Kora have made him an international star. This week on 101, meet Malian musician and Kora player Tumani Jibate. A master at releasing the intricate sounds of this instrument unique to West Africa, he's dedicated himself to keeping the tradition of the griot alive through the kora. It's a practice Tumani Jibate can trace back 71 generations in his family. In fact, his father, Sidike Jibate, was considered a pioneer in adapting his play to create a more modern feel, something reflected in his son's compositions. Ironically, in spite of the tradition of griots passing skill down father to son, Tumani was mostly self-taught. What Tumani Jabati has achieved more than any of his family's previous generations of Kora players is to take the instrument to the world stage and collaborate with other international stars. And he's also expressed his dedication to Mali and the African continent by becoming a UN goodwill ambassador in the fight against AIDS. Tumani Jabati, it's really a pleasure to have some time with you. Thank you. How are you? Assalamu well, alaikum. Walaikum salam. Now, it's interesting because you're so famous as a Kora player, and this is a unique 21 string instrument that's obviously very, very uh, indigenous to that part of uh, West Africa. But the interesting thing is it has so many uh, years of and centuries of tradition and history. How hard is it to keep that tradition going in this modern day of synthesized and electronic music? There's a different style that we call today blues, jazz, rock and roll. You know, there's connection that, you know, blues, you know, Jazz come from blues, and rock and roll come from you know that. So, but all of those styles come from Africa, you know. And um, it's true that when I'm composing song today in the griot repertory, we have a thousand, thousand of song, because the griot people compose the song when the king made a peace in any kind of events happen in the empire. So the griot people make compose the song. So we have thousands, thousands, thousands of songs. So they document history through the songs. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, and some songs has 100, 200, 400, 600 years ago. And then when I take a music from that, I put the arrangement for today. And when I, you know, I took a music from the past, I put the arrangement from today you know, or, you know, so it's, the, it's, a, it's a meeting, you know, the past meet the present for you the future. You modernize it. Yeah, yeah, you see, so that's does, the stuff. Does, does, you know, being a griot and doing a particular kind of music then make you have to put commercial considerations aside? Or can the, the style of music you do also be sort of commercially popular? I know, of course, you're incredibly popular, but is it the kind of music you can say with the new arrangements, it's part of the pop culture as well? Well, because the world today is different to the world from 80, you know, like uh, um, 2018, you know, so it's, it's, it's just to bring another, 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 another brief, to, you know, to make the music brief, you know, differently, you know, because when, if I only play my style, if I only play the music from my countries, it's talking about my history, it's talking about the geography, it's talking about the legend from my country, from my continent, West Africa, and so I have to, and people, the Western people or other countries people don't understand what we are saying, you know, but they can enjoy, you know, enjoy the melody, they can love the music, you know, because music touched them. But this music has a history, it's a mystic, you know, then it can touch the people. We don't need really to make it commercial, it's already commercial. It's also deep, it's also, you know, for meditation, for spirituality, for, you know, any kind of things you can, you know, it's not only the dance, it's not only, you know, enjoy the music, but because it's, it's the roots of a lot of things. 
I, do, I want to do a little journey through your past now then and uh, go back to your, your birthplace was Bamako, the, uh, the capital of Mali. And of course, you were born into a family of griots. As you say, you can't just uh, become one. You, you has to be, it has to be part of your culture born, yeah. and family. Yeah. Um, when did you first realize you had that history and that this was part of your destiny, really? Yes. Um, thank God. I didn't uh, learn the Quran with any teacher. Quran was given from God to me. And I keep listening to different kind of background, you know, music, music like James Brown, like, uh, you know, Bimbea Jazz from Guinea Conakry, Les Ambassadeurs from Mali, the Rare Band, you know, and, you know, Otis Redding, many, many kind of style, the Baobab from Senegal, but, you know, so I get, I get a new, new idea fresh because um, on that time, um, it was only small things like uh, for the Musa Suso from Chicago, from Gambia, but living in Chicago. Um, uh, Lamin Conte, peace for him, he passed away. There is the both musicians who take the Kora in different level. But you, you have 71 generations, as you Kora say, players. of Kora players through your family. How did you trace it back so far? Well, it's already, it's, it's right down in the, in the family, so we know it. You know, my son is 20 years old. He's calling Sidiki Jabate. He, he, I'm only play the kora, but he, he can play kora and keyboard. He can, uh, you know, he make uh, the arrangement and those stuff, you know, and he's doing hip hop, you know. So it is, it's different, but uh, he's taking the music. Also, we are taking the music, um, say, okay, don't forget the roots. Don't forget the tradition. You can fly and go whatever you want, but you have to stay in touch with the tradition. It's interesting because your son is named after your father, who was also a very famous uh, Kora player. In fact, in 1977, you were about 12 years old at the, uh, the, the festival, the uh, Festac, prestigious uh, Black Arts Festival. He was named King of Kora, yeah, so to in speak. Nigeria. You know? So that was a lot of, uh, that's a lot of pressure on you uh, as his son as well. Yeah, well, uh, it's, um, it's like challenge. You know, it's like challenge somehow. Um, if I say I didn't learn the music, um, nobody teach me to play the kora. Why, why did so, he teach you, by the way? Because um, um, most of the countries, African countries, get their independence in 1960s. And when do we get the independence? Uh, so um, um, the government of Mali wanted um, for, for, for them, for the Griot people, to make uh, a national traditional band. My father's and my mom, they was really busy with those um, other musicians to build the traditional. Uh, so then I went to the school, and then so I was teaching myself how to teach. And my mom, a piece for her also, she was telling me, she was a really big, big, big singer. Uh, Nena Koita. Nena Koita, she was telling me, um, okay, she can meme, just say, mm, da, 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 and then I play the chorus. You know, I wanted to play like a soccer players, you know, so I really wanted to, but, you know, finally i uh, be going to the music side. Interestingly enough, your father was known for his very unique, almost sort of idiosyncratic style of kora playing, sometimes described as like the hot style. And, and you're, you're sort of also, uh, you know, said to have that similar influence. Did you sort of ha consciously follow that style of his? Yeah, because um, the, um, the, the, there are so many different styles of Kora. Senegalese um, from Kazamans in Senegal also, and Gambia style, Guinea Conakry style, they are different. Because Kora needs to be played in only with four fingers. And the, the style, the Jabate family style, is to play the Kora, um, the three function of the Kora, who's playing the bass line the melody and the improvisation on one time in 21 strings. So I keep moving this, these things, and thank God I'm now, uh, many people are following this kind of style, because you can see some different chora players, they play the chora only with uh, three fingers, but people don't know. But if I listen to it, I can, you know, I can know, you know. But the real one, the real one, the real one is to play uh, with four fingers. Because the meaning of four fingers, playing with the chora with four fingers, the positions of the fingers in the chora is the name of God. Ah. Yeah, when you're playing Allahu. Yeah, because it is. 
It's interesting, though, because, of course, you have this fantastic history, but in Bamako, around the 70s, when you were, you know, becoming a teenager, there was a lot of American music influence, like black American rock, Jimi Hendrix, people like that, but also bands like Led Zeppelin and so on. Were, were these strongly influential on you? Is that who you listen to? Well, um, I was young. There was not even a TV station in Mali on uh, the 70s. There was only one radio station, which is a national radio station. And uh, tape people were playing tape and also the vin vinyl. Uh, and I remember that I was listening to those kind of things, but did, those music didn't take, I didn't take a really any influences about that because it's different to my music, but it's a music. You know, you can say, I don't like this style of music. I don't like blues. I don't like African music. I don't like jazz. But you cannot say I don't like music in general in my life. So I like to listen to other musicians, but I keep my tradition and my roots going. When you uh, took up the, the Quran and you, and you knew this was basically your lifelong sort of uh, passion, what did you think you would achieve? What were you hoping to achieve with, with your playing? It's to open a new door for the Quran because in the past there was not many people joining the music of the Quran. People was just playing Quran and listening to the Quran music and say, oh, this is a very nice music, classical music from Africa. But I wanted people to join this music, and we did it. That's the reason, you know, we make a different project with a Spanish musicians, which is a, a great uh, and very old tradition, also the flamenco music. And, uh, you know, Taj Mahal, who is, uh, you know, playing the blues, Daddy Taj. And uh, Roswell Rood, who played the trombone jazz, trombone player, and, you know, Bjork and those stuff, you know. Well, tell me about Juga Bandi, this, this style you developed where two sort of instruments have a dialogue together. Yeah, this is the something that uh, is the question and answer. It's a question and answer, question and answer. Um, um, it's to give opportunity because there is a little bit uh, mis misunderstanding between uh, Western people and African people about African style of music. Uh, be because if you say African music, most of them think that uh, um, uh, it's only dance, it's only djembe percussion, but it's not like that. And we have improvisation in our style, on, in what we play, we have improvisation. And in Western style, if you improvise, they call it you are doing a jazz. They say, how oh, this man doing jazz, or is he doing rock and roll, or, you know. But we have improvisation or music, but we cannot call that to really. So that's why we just try to make like a question and answer, and people can understand that. This is not only the jazz, because we're not calling in Africa jazz, like Ali Farka piece for him says, we're not calling blues, we have a different names. Interestingly enough, you've done a lot of collaborations, you know, with American blues artists, Icelandic musician uh, Bjork, uh, even more recently Afro-Cubism. How, how important are those collaborations to you, and how has it changed your view on the world? Well, um, I'm happy that, thank God, uh, that the music of the Kora is growing and Kora is growing at the, at the same time. Um, happy to be the first Kora player to win double Grammys with Ali Farkature. Um, it's nice today that very great, very good that in the world that the traditional music and the traditional, you know, the, the culture is still moving because in 10, 15 years, 20 years ago, nobody can think about those kind of influences in the, in the music. So I'm very happy because when I meet other musicians, I'm not playing their music. They are not playing my music. I play my music, they play their own music, we put together and it will become a new music. It's what I'm doing. What was that? Was that the reason in 1990 you created the Symmetric Orchestra, which was again linked to this idea of Africa's Monday Empire and and the history of Africa? Yes, really. Um, there's uh, what this is one part, and the secondly is the big band are now disappearing. Right. You know, there's not more uh, big orchestra like uh, in the 60s, like in the 70s. You know, 
black mamba also those kind of style um, um, uh, Prince Nikumbalka or those kind of style you know big 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 orchestra one because of the high technology because of the computer um, the job for 20 musicians or 30 musicians now the computer can do that on one time mm -hmm. so then why keeping doing all this it's good to be you know for the uh, computer for the high technology but um, the computer doesn't have emotion like a musician who come who play and also for the generation next generation we have to think about the next generation that's the reason i make um, the symmetric orchestra symmetric is a complementarity i play something you play another things we put together and it will become symmetric and you went touring with the, the orchestra too. I wonder what was the response? How did the, the live audience enjoy? Well, the uh, people love it really. And it's a most of the strong orchestra today in Mali. And the Chora is in the middle of that. Because the Chora is the passport, it's the ID card of Malian culture, of West African culture. We have a lot of traditional instruments. We have a balafon, we have a percussion, we have a we have Angoni, we have a, um, Soku, which is a traditional violin, but the Kora is the only one from Manding, um, Manding people, ethnic, um, that you cannot see in the, at any other countries in Africa or any continent in the world. It's an incredibly complex instrument with all those strings and the angles. That, how, how, I mean, obviously you, you, you've mastered it to such a degree, but if you can think back, how hard is it to learn? How hard is it to really get a feel for that instrument? <laughs> Very easy to learn how to play the chora, really, because um, it's like a guitar, it's like a piano, it's like, it's, it's depending how, how uh, you feel it, how you want to be to, to learn. It's like going to the school and you know, and it's, it's like that, it's uh, how you can be involved, how you so excited to learn. It's that it and just needed to be concentrated, you know. Now, of course, Tumani, you've had incredible success, the double Grammys, all these awards and recognition globally. But let me ask you what you see as your defining moments. What do you see as the key moments in your life? What's stuck in your mind? Well, um, I used to keep sharing what God gave to me to the generation, you know, and then to try to make more to money Jabati, more to money Jabati, more to money Jabati. More, 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 more and more. I want to share and then I want, um, on the music side, I want to share um, also and then, you know, to bring a peace today, to bring spirituality, which is, I think, this is my, 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 my mission to do some, somehow, really. It's interesting, it took you about 20 years to go back to the acoustic sound. You'd released the album Kaira, and then 20 years later almost, you released the Mande Variations. Why go back to that acoustic sound when you'd been experimenting with so much else? Yeah, you know, I, I've been playing with a lot of musicians and meeting, listening to a lot of great musicians. And Kaira album it was my first one. And 20 years ago, in 20 years, I had a meet, meeting a lot of great musicians the project with Taj, with, uh, you know, different musicians, um, you know, being on during that 20 years. So um, I come back again to the solo one, to the acoustic one. Um, then people can say, okay, how level I get playing with other musicians, um, traveling, you know, uh, making fusion, you know, this is the experience because Always, when you're playing with different musicians, when you're meeting different musicians, you make, you give, and also you learn. So, Manding Variation is how to, sh is to show how, you know, Tumani in, was in 20 years. Now, even though your father didn't directly teach you, I presume he was a major influence and some kind of mentor for you. Who else, apart from your father, influenced you as, as a musician? A lot of, a lot of, I mean, I think Lord, all of all of the musicians, all of you know, I I listen. I not listen only the traditional music, African music. I can listen to all of all kind of style, and I've been really um, enjoyed really listening to all of the musicians, all of this, all, all of all style in my life really. Because you cannot know the old things. You just know 
some things. Like uh, when you, you touch them and you go to the bar, you can just drink one bottle of water. You cannot drink all the old water in the bar. So you just play and you just give, you just sing. You just give what you have, but you cannot give the old things, you know, because you cannot have that. You use the power of your celebrity to also back a lot of important social causes. One of them, of course, is that you're a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations for UN AIDS. Why pick the HIV AIDS cause in particular? Well, I think um, somehow is to, is to help, you know, um, is to help um, the old great people working on those kind, in those program. Those people, they are not sleeping, they are fighting because Africa is the most continent um, delivery to the AIDS, you know, and really without not really too much uh, possibility, not much, um, not much um, 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 plan, you know, not much um, way to go. And people, most of the people don't know, um, they don't, some people don't even believe so I'm, I'm happy to be, um, you know, a goodwill ambassador of uh, UNAIDS. And um, what I'm doing, you know, is not taking any money from them. It's just in my side, because I have my management company, I have my records company, during the tour uh, around the world, just to give this message, stop stigmatization and also, you know, um, the discrimination, because it could be, you know, something that people can understand. You can just give them the words how to understand, and music is one of the best ways to communicate, you know. Interestingly enough, you also are very active in the Malian community, especially back in your hometown, Bamako, with young musicians. I think it's something you're very keen to, to promote, aren't you? Especially through uh, Mandinka Kora Productions, which you, which you lead as well. Um, how, how interested are you finding young people in, in, in following in your path? You know, um, it's a lot of influences coming now today in all of the world. Like uh, um, the ape up come from the United States to Paris, you know, to Europe, to, you know, and the old youngers. The youth don't know. They just come and jump on this pole, swimming pool of hip up and, you know, trying to do what those people are doing here. But you have your own reality. Your country has, you, you know, your country has its own reality. And you have your whole tradition. You can do the hip up but on your own way, you know, try to promote your, your custom try to promote the traditional instrument. That's the reason that I've been, you know, we created Mandin Kakora production. And now we have a new recording studio called Africa Studio, where people come around the world to record with us there. You know, so I'm very happy to, to, to promote because I'm like a bridge between Africa and Western. So the bridge born in Africa, um, you know, and growing in, 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 in Western countries somehow. So we are bridge. I understand the culture from my country because I was born, that's my countries. But how do, here also, I know the system a little bit. I know how to, so we have to be, you know, try to put the both together to make a peace and, you know. Is there anything that's really outstanding that you want to do? Of course, all the success with the, your music is great, but is there something that's on your list of things to get done, which you're, you're itching to get done? Well, <laughs> anyway, I really want to keep moving. I really want to keep moving and um, promote more and be flexible, um, easy to get, and uh, ready to share. So how would you like to be remembered? What would you like your legacy to be? Well, to be um, a spiritual musician, a spiritual one, um, to be humble, griot, to stay griot. Like I said, you have to be born griot, but you cannot become a griot. Meaning of griot is, mean, to be griot is, it means a lot of things. Tumani Jivati, thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. <laughs>